Hey guys, Chills here with Ableton Tips, and today we're going to be making this bass line. Okay, so I've got these drums prepared, and they sound like this. And now we're just going to add a bass line to this. So first of all, we're going to create a new MIDI channel with Control Shift T, and we're just going to highlight these four bars over here, and we're going to hit Control Shift M, and we're going to be working in a Phrygian scale. So you can see here I have scale turned on, but I'm just going to turn that off to show you how to turn it on. So we choose scale over here, then we just go down to G, and then we go to Phrygian. And the reason I'm using Phrygian here is because I want this kind of uh, dark, mysterious uh, kind of vibe, and Phrygian is, is is known to give off that kind of a feeling, especially since we've got the first note being the G, the second note being the, the A flat. Uh, because they're only a semitone apart, when you move between them, it gives you that kind of dark vibe. Uh, so you'll hear it a lot in bass house and tech house and stuff, that they will be using these kind of modes. Okay, so let's uh, grab Operator, because that's the synth we're going to be using for this. So we're just going to search over here, Operator. I'm going to double click on that. And we're just going to change the waveform to a saw wave. And we're just going to bring the filter frequency down a bit over here, uh, just in the beginning for when we're writing the melody. Just because I don't like to have too many high frequencies in the bass line, it just becomes a bit painful to the ear to work with. Uh, so let's just uh, hear how this sounds. We're going to go down to, uh, let's go down to G1 over here. Okay, um, we probably want to go a little bit lower than that, one octave down. So I'm just going to hold shift and hit down. There we go. And now the bass line goes doom, 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 doom. So we need to just draw that out quickly. So I'm going to hold control and drag this across. And these, this note should be shorter than that one because it's do, 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 do. And then this one can be pretty long here. Okay, then I think we just highlight all of this and hit Control D three times. Okay, and I think these notes should all be a little bit shorter than they are. Let's just grab all of them. We don't want them to be a full uh, 16th or 8th note. And I'm just going to zoom in here and shorten them just a little bit. Note lengths play a big part in creating a strong groove. So you should always just try and play with them and see if you can find a nice combination of long and short notes. Okay, and then this last few over here I'm going to bring down to the F. This one stays down here. And then we're going to add another note just in over there and shorten that one a bit. And let's just shorten this one. There we go. And let's just duplicate this over or we can, because the loop brace is enabled here, uh, we can just drag that over and it'll duplicate it. Okay, so now we need to design our sound. So we're just going to double click here on the operator. And the first thing I'm going to do is just set up my filter to the correct frequency here. We're going to set it to 2.8. Oh, not like that. So it's got to be 2,800. There we go. That brings us to 280. And then we're going to just change this to PRD, uh, which basically just enables, you'll see this filter drive suddenly switched on. So we can give it a bit of drive. We're going to give it 5.06 drive. 
So you can see with our drive, we just don't have that like dirty grit in it. Okay, so let's just set that to 5.06 here. And we're gonna give it a little bit of resonance too. We're gonna to put it up to 40%. We're also going to give it some envelope here. We're going to give it 19% here. Okay, then we're just going to increase the decay on the filter envelope. We're going to bring it up here. Okay, next up, I'm going to just change the algorithm so that we can have more than one oscillator instead of using them in this setup, which is essentially using each one of the... Um, oscillators to modulate each other's frequency. We can just click here and set it to parallel, and now we'll be able to essentially just use them independently of each other. Okay, so let's just go back to our first one, and we're gonna click on the envelope here. We're gonna just bring that sustain down to minus infinity, and the decay we're just gonna bring down to around one second. So it's making it a little bit more plucky. Okay, then the second oscillator over here, we're going to make that a sine wave. It's already a sine wave. We're gonna set the course up to two, so that's gonna be playing one octave higher. And if I just turn down this one, you'll be able to hear this oscillator. Okay, so I'm just gonna bring that volume level down to about minus four-ish. And then we're going to bring the sustain again down to minus infinity. And the decay is going to be around about 800 milliseconds. Okay, and then we can... Okay, and then we can just mix in this one over here. And I'm just going to bring down the volume... Okay, next up we're going to EQ it a bit and sidechain it. Let's first set up the sidechain. And the point of sidechain is to just make sure that the baseline ducks every time the kick hits. And that just lets the kick come through nicely and make sure we don't have any mixing issues between the kick and the bass. Okay, let's uh, go in here and we'll just search for a compressor. I'm going to double click the compressor and we're just going to open it up over here. Click on sidechain, take audio input from our bass, uh, from our kick, sorry. Okay, and then we're just going to play this and drag this threshold down until we can kind of hear the bass line ducking out of the way. And you can also visually see it on the compressor. Okay, so I think we can probably bring up the release a little bit on the compressor just to give it a bit more of a more of a longer curve. So as I turn this up, you'll see that curve slowly lengthening a bit. I think around about, yeah, around about 47 is good. Okay, next up, we're just going to grab an EQ. So I'm gonna just search EQ8 here. And let's just look at that. Okay, so I think we might be getting a little bit muddy round about here, so I'm just gonna scoop out a little bit and just hold, uh, you can turn up the Q over here to make this point a little bit narrower, or you can hold Alt while uh, clicking on this point and drag up and down and change the shape of that. So I'm just going to EQ a bit of the mud out of this. Just a bit over there. And then I'm gonna grab this number three and just boost a little bit of frequencies over here. And we're also gonna boost the sub a little bit. Let's just bring down the volume slightly. 
Okay, thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you did, please leave a like, comment and subscribe. And you can also support us by visiting us at productionmusiclive.com. Thanks for watching.